I've spent the last 18 months learning how to fly my Bear Hawk aircraft. It's been a lot of fun. When I started, I had very little tail wheel time. So in order to build up some experience, I simply accumulated as many takeoffs and landings as I could. And this video is all about what I've learned along the way. The aircraft was very light on the day that I filmed this. There was also a light headwind and I spent time quantifying the position error before I flew at these slow speeds. Good and traffic, Bear Hawk Bravo, lining up 3-4, rolling, remaining in the circuit. Lanes I'm using, three notches of flap. Port stick, we can now see down the runway. And off we go. That's about 50 knots. And right there is 500 feet a minute. That's the one disadvantage with this technique at these low speeds is the runway tends to be obscured by the nose. Bring it back to 42. And that's touching down tailwheel first. fly flap 3 all the way down you'll see there's not a whole lot of difference really you do get a little bit more drag from uh, the fourth stage of flap particularly if you've got the flap cables really tight but it also makes it quite hard to pull the flap there's three stages of flap so there's 50 knots get a little bit of power bring the nose up a wee bit and I'll get it back to 45 fly 45 knots most of the way down this uh, short finals. Back to 42. Now coming in. Okay, so just lowering the nose, putting the aim point just on top of the engine cowling. I'll hold 50 knots all the way. The obvious advantage here is I can see the runway, the whole runway.
And you see all the cylinder head temps quite nicely uh, in their normal range. Got about, that's showing 108 knots there. It will take a little bit. There's 26 inches of uh, manifold pressure. Still at 2200 RPM, the fuel fuel flow's gone up to 43 litres an hour. About 42 from experience works quite well. There we go, 26 inches of manifold pressure, 2200 RPM, 43 litres an hour. So, so just over 10 gallons an hour. And I'm lean of peak, so I've got it leaned right out. 116 knots, that's pretty good. So let's try one more setting and I'll go rich of peak. And I'll set 24 squared. Now this will be a faster crew setting. I'll stay at 3,000 feet, probably get up around 125 knots indicated. Right, so burning about 69 litres an hour there. Fuel burn's gone up quite high. It always is when you're rich at peak. It's a bit dirtier, produces more carbon monoxide and uh, tends to fail your plugs a bit more too. So there we're showing 120 knots. Pretty respectable. And uh, I'll just increase that... Uh, Echo down 24 inches of manifold pressure there, 2400 RPM, and showing 122 knots, that's pretty respectable, 122 knots indicated, and the true airspeed here is showing 127 knots. Important to realise of course that the true airspeed on these EFIS displays is a direct function through an algorithm of the indicated airspeed. We're now showing 126 knots true airspeed, that's pretty good, but it is burning a lot, burning uh, 70 litres an hour. Let's lean that back and see what we get. So I've now got 24 inches, 2400 RPM, 42 litres an hour, and it's dropped about 8 to 10 knots back to 115 knots. But the, the fuel flow's come down to 42 litres an hour. They're not too bad. I personally I operate lean a peak everywhere. Keeps everything uh, cooler, keeps the cylinder head temps cooler, and it's just a lot nicer for the engine, I think. Well, there you go, that's where I'm at currently with my approaches and landings. As you can see, my go-to approach speed is typically around 50 knots, and I, my rule of thumb is that for every 100 pounds increase over and above 2,000, I add one knot of uh, indicated airspeed. For example, 2,200 pounds, typically two POB, some camping gear, and three hours fuel, will fly 52 knots. Consequently, at max landing weight, um, 2,500 pounds, I'll fly typically 55 knots on approach. That gives a good safe margin. Also in gusty conditions, I'll add a couple of knots. Flap selection for landing, usually I'll use flap three. I sometimes use flap four if I want a little bit of extra drag on shorter airstrips. Also for takeoff, flaps two works very well, and if I want to get the tail off the ground uh, a little bit easier, flap three works well there as well. So you can also see the aircraft can be dragged in under a lot of power at a high pitch attitude uh, and a very low approach speed and that that does result in a lower ground roll. It does put the aircraft a lot closer to the stall speed when on final approach. Um, it, it, it also reduces the visibility of the runway and for those reasons I tend not to use that. I, I prefer to fly an approach speed at 50 knots or even a little bit higher and I enjoy having that safe margin. But that technique is there if you need it. I do hope you've enjoyed the uh, video and thanks very much for watching.